There's always something better, something improved, something new. But it's not always really what it's cracked up to be. This is Barry Fields with Tim and Torah, day five at Bereshit in the beginning. And we have been studying this Torah portion in the context of authority and leadership. Let's go back to Bereshit, Genesis chapter three, and continue with the original sin story. And it says in verse four, and the Nahash said to the woman, you shall not certainly die. For Elohim knows that in the day that you eat of it, that is the fruit, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. Yes, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And she took other its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loin coverings for themselves. How many times have we read this story or discussed this section of Scripture and thought, man, if they had just not messed up, why did they mess up? What was the impetus of the original sin that is taking place here? How did we get into this mess? And, you know, one side will blame the woman and then the other side said, well, the man was with her and he should have stopped her. They both were to blame. This is this is a human error, mankind error. So let's not get into gender accusations. But here is the the foundational elements, I think, or at least some of the foundational elements of this sin And that is that Chava, Eve, she listened to an alternative vision that was offered by the serpent. Yah had already declared his vision. You are to be in the garden. You are to work in the garden. You are to guard the garden. You are to enjoy the garden. You are to reproduce in the garden. You are to dwell in my presence in the garden. Everything in the garden belongs to you as far as dominion is concerned. You have authority over it. Every living creature, all the plants, the produce of the garden, you're free to eat, enjoy. Life is good, and I'll come and be with you walking in the cool of the evening. What's wrong with that picture? Oh, by the way, that fruit Leave it alone. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. You're not to eat it. Stay away from it. The one thing forbidden didn't seem to be a problem until the serpent made it one. And that's the craftiness, the the working of darkness, the working of deception is to cause us to look at that which does not belong to us and imagine that life would be better if we had it. If only we had what we don't have, then we would be happy. That's the American dream. Striving to obtain the material goods, the social status, the prominence, the success, the acclaim, the fame, that we personally do not have at this moment. People sell their souls, their lives, their families, their energies, their bodies, everything to accomplish whatever it is that they think they don't have. But the problem here with this offering of the serpent is that Hava already had what he was offering the knowledge of. She was already like Elohim in that she was created in his image. Yah, being Elohim, she was never going to be Elohim. That's not something that we are to to seek to obtain. That's not our role. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to be Yah. (laughs) I can't imagine the, the overwhelming uh, 
uh, involvement and and so forth. I mean, it, it's so far beyond my imagination. I I can't ascribe to that. Let Yah be Yah, and let his enemies be scattered. <laughs> Rise up, O Yah, and just let me honor you. She rebelled against Yah's vision to achieve Yah's vision. Think about that. She rebelled against Yah's vision, which was laid out for them. She rebelled against that, thinking that she's going to accomplish a better version of Yah's own vision. This is deception. So leadership is guarding the vision. If you cast vision, if you see where a people needs to go, if you see where you need to go, if you see what needs to be happening, even for your community, maybe not your spiritual relationships, but your community relationships, you have a vision. Hold on to that vision, but you're going to have to protect and guard that vision because there are going to be many voices that will rise up and say it's counterfeit, it's low quality, it's an impossibility, and they will shoot it down at every turn. Somehow, Kava became convinced that she didn't have what she already had. Again, that level of deception, it, it just plays with the mind. So if we're going to lead, if we're going to be influential, and that's just it. I remember many years ago reading uh, the little quip from John Maxwell, a, a guru on leadership and business applications especially. And he says this, and very simply said, leadership is, it's influence. If you influence people, you are a leader, whether you have a title, a role, or an office or not. If you influence people, you are a leader. And if you are a leader, then you cast a vision, whether you spell it out as points one through three, or whether you have any bullet points to present to anyone. You speak of things, you declare things, and people want to get on board with you and say, yeah, I can agree to that. Let's do that. How do I help you do that? I'd like to be a part of what you're talking about. That's leadership. Moshe had to guard the vision of Israel receiving their inheritance because people like Korak wanted to rise up and challenge that vision. Zimri he brought Cosby in, and they, as a couple, an illicit couple, sought to challenge the vision of the inheritance. And then, of course, you had the ten liars who came back with an evil report and lied about the land. They challenged the vision. Moshe had to go through a great deal of struggle to protect the vision that Yah had given him to cast. Yeshua also had to guard Yah's vision for a righteous people, a righteous Israel, to serve him. He had to guard against the truth being uh, polluted or challenged or diluted. He had cast the vision of truth that actually sets men free, truth that is true. He cast the vision of the kingdom of heaven that was not in the liking of the religious professionals. They tried to shout him down, to shout him down, to annihilate him in order to quench the vision. Not everybody's going to be happy with your leadership, but leaders just lead. They don't ask for people to give me a vision and I'll go with it. They see and they go, and those who trust their leadership will go with them. We need leaders. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for being a part of this 10-minute Torah community. Thank you for praying for not only for me, but for those who watch alongside you, and I encourage you to do that. 
Uh, thank you for sharing on your social media pages. Please feel free to do so for hitting the like button, for subscribing, and even supporting if you feel so led. Until next week, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.